Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Perez and I also have a YouTube channel. But I am helping my sister Lee today in her ministry and I wanted to do a quick video on pride. And um, mainly the reason why I wanted to do the video on pride is because I struggle with it. I don't know if any of you, I know most of us do struggle with pride. So that's why I wanted to do something about, about this because um, it's something that we all struggle with. And I just wanted to be very sincere in my video. The Lord is working in me. Um, he's working in me tremendously from the time that I was saved until now. I am, I, I, the Lord is not me because I cannot do this on my own. Um, it is not by my doing, but of the Lord's um, and by his grace that we are not only saved, but are constantly changing and in the bible it also says it reminds me of the verse uh from isaiah 64 8 which says but now O lord thou art our father we are the clay and thou art our potter and we are all we all are the work of thy hand isaiah 64 8 so we are constantly in that fire you know if if the potter god doesn't like the way that we are changing um he will redo it he will restart again and again and again until we are molded into what he desires of us and i'm just going to be honest with you guys uh, pride was the biggest thing for me um mainly because of i mean our childhood is one of the factors, you know, the way that we were raised is one of the factors as to why we are the way we are today. Um, but for me, it was it was a very big factor. You know, um, I didn't have a father figure and that has a lot to do with how I was raised and um, how I think today. I didn't have a father figure and um, my mother, I love my mother very dearly. She is the reason why I be to Christ again. Um, because she instilled it in me after she accepted Christ in 1996 and she prayed she got on her knees and prayed and prayed and prayed for, over me um, <clears throat> and her children my brother as well so you know it's because of her prayers that I am now born again because you know the Lord hears her cries he hears our cries as um, as believers you know my mother um, she was always working so you know she's not how I am of course every character is different so everybody has a different character and the way that I am I'm very strong-minded and I'm very firm and um, pretty much I'm, I'm, I'm strict and um, I can lead a crowd fairly easily and so that's my character my character is to be a leader and to to have authority and the last word that's just the way that I was made and you know i have to now use this for good um the word of god says in scripture it says in first peter 4 10 it says as every man hath received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god so we should use these gifts that god has given us for good not allow us not cause us to sin or stumble or cause any one of them, uh, one of us to stumble or any one of the little ones to stumble, but instead cause it, uh, work it for good. I'm sorry about my windowsill, guys. I'm trying, to... <laughs> I found a good lighting, but the sun is like peeking through this beautiful tree that's behind in my backyard and it's like causing all these shadows. Um, and so he, you know, everything, my, I have anger and now I understand that the anger that I have is towards um injustice of innocent blood um innocent abuse um anything that has to do with children um or people who cannot tend for themselves it just the anger that i have inside pretty much should be used for good and it, and i and i and we should all apply that um if you have anger issues use it for good don't cause it to sin on your own life so what i'm trying to get at is um all the character, all the things that build up my character and that make up who I am, um, now God is using it for good. And I'm learning that slowly but surely that God is using that for good. And so what I'm trying to say is that my pride, 
could be used for good. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it is a sin to have pride, and I'm going to read some Bible verses on pride before I get into my own understanding. But um, let me get to a couple here. So Romans 12, 16, be of the same mind one toward another, mind not high things, pride, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. So do not use pride for your own ego, for your own benefit, for your own factors, for your own good, but use it for others. Um, and first of all, it says that pride is a sin. We should not be prideful. We should not, oh my goodness, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, we should not have pride. It, pride is something that uh, new believers should not have. Another verse, Proverbs 11:2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. The one I'm looking for, it's not here. Hold on. James 4, 6, which is closer to what I'm looking for. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Okay, so he, he resists the proud. He resists the person who has pride in their heart. God is the only one who knows your heart. He is the only one who knows truly how you feel. You can explain that all day and long. You can explain that to everyone and you can even have the best actor face in the world. I mean, you can have, you can be the best Oscar nominated actor in the entire planet to into making people think and even convincing the best of the best, even body language experts, that you are not proud. But the Lord knows your heart. And so you are not fooling God. You can fool everyone else, but you cannot fool God. And so when we have pride in our hearts, when we pray, God sees that and he resists that. Do you understand? He resists that. So first we need to be humble. Be humble and accept that we have sinned and proclaim it say it with our mouth and ask our brother for forgiveness if we have caused him to stumble or if we have caused him to sin if we have sinned in our anger if we have hurt our brother or sister ask for forgiveness that's not that's step one of pride of bringing down pride and that's something that only the lord has put in my heart because i on my own have not be able have been able to do that on my own before I accepted Christ. I was never able to do that. To this day, there are some people that I have lost touch with because I refuse to talk to them when they hurt they hurt me. So when um when they hurt me um before I accepted the Lord, I I my na my nature, who I was, I would never talk to them again. That's just the person that I was. I would never talk to them again. Um, and that's just something that was in my nature. I learned to do that. It was, it was a, um, it was a learning process. It's not something that was part of us, even though it comes natural to the sinner, to the unbeliever, it comes natural. Why are there two lines on my face? That is, um, it comes natural to the, to the unbeliever to not ever talk to someone again. That's, that's part of the ego and that's part of the pride. So that's something that the Lord has been breaking down in me. And it takes a long time. I'm not telling you immediately after I accepted Christ, he broke it down that very instant and magical things started happening because it's not what happened. Number one, the first thing that happened that was immediate was the Holy Spirit came and lived inside of my body, came and lived inside of me because that's actually biblical. That's what happens when you accept Christ. He comes and lives inside of you. Your body becomes a holy temple. Um, 1 Corinthians 6.19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Hello, princess. So do you not know that your body is the Holy Temple? So that, that is what he's referring to. The Holy Spirit came immediately. And this is his Holy Temple right here, his body, the physical body. And so that was immediate. And um, then everything slowly started changing in me. Uh, the number two thing that happened when I accepted Christ was I had this burning sensation, this not physical sensation, just this immediate feeling of wanting to hug every single person that I saw. And no, I was not high. No, I was not on drugs. I actually was, I can't, I don't want to say this because it sounds politically incorrect, but I was high on Christ. I actually was, I was just 
loving everybody because that's also that's also in scripture love thy neighbor as yourself that's just this love you love even your enemies i loved even my enemies guys i wanted to just go hug my enemies and i wanted to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth so i wanted to stand on every mountain and scream and tell everybody the love of Christ, how Christ loves you, and He died for you, and He died for your sins, and He and He loves you, and He just He doesn't want you to perish, but to have everlasting life. And so that's my conclusion, guys. Um, I wanted to say that that you know, um, let me give you a couple more verses on pride. It's something that I'm working on. I'm not I'm not sitting here on a pedestal saying you need to work on pride. You need to learn this. You I'm talking inwardly i'm speaking to myself and hopefully somebody can learn something from this as well because i know we all struggle with it especially as believers especially as believers we struggle with forgiving our brother but that's exactly what we need to do this is uh the the, the bible verse uh, luke 17 3 4 pay attention to yourselves if your brother sins rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and if he sins against you seven times in the day and turn to you seven times saying i repent you must forgive him you must forgive him and another another verse that comes to mind ephesians 4 26 be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath we cannot go to sleep angry at our brother we cannot say we love our brothers and sisters and yet at the same time not talk to this sister or not talk to this brother because they did us wrong. We cannot be like that. That's why I'm quick now after the Lord rescued me and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I am quick to ask for forgiveness because I do not want to let the sun go down on my anger. I forgave my ex-husband. I forgave him. He still thinks I'm angry at him. That's not something I'm doing right now. I'm not currently angry at him. Yes, I am hurt. That is a whole different scenario. I am hurt and that takes time to heal and that's why God has to work in me. Um, but at the same time, there's a difference between forgiving your brother and not allowing people that are not good for you in your life to continue to be there in your life. There's a huge difference, but he's using that to his advantage. He's saying, aren't you Christian? Shouldn't you forgive me? In other words, Shouldn't you let me be in your life and let me hurt you over and over? There is a huge difference between forgiving your brother and allowing someone to stay in your life because you are a Christian and you need to allow them to hurt you over and over. The Lord also said that we need to stand up for ourselves. So 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be misled. Bad association, associations spoil useful habits. We have to stand firm in the Lord and know that when we need to um, step away for, from people, toxic people, people who are hurting us, and forgive them at the same time. Forgive them and pray for them. It does not mean we need to be weak. Being Christian does not equal to being weak. Um, and that's what I struggled with a lot. That's why it took a long time to uh, accept Jesus Christ, even though I know that the Lord had his perfect timing. He has his perfect timing on when you he will you will accept him it's not it's not your doing it's nothing that you will do oh my goodness it's not your doing it's nothing that you will do but instead it's his perfect timing and that's why you know i i for a long time i wasn't ready i wasn't ready because it wasn't his timing um and that's a beautiful mystery but i you know um what i'm saying is for a long time i saw christians as weak i saw them as weak and that's just something that i misunderstood i had a misinterpretation on um christians and it was because of uh the influences that i had around me and um they weren't they weren't acting properly um you know you are to be christians uh christian does not mean weak it means you are very strong you are valiant and not everybody can walk that walk um the bible verse but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 24, 13. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. Matthew 7, 14. Um, so not many, many proclaim to be Christians, but not many are actually Christians, real Christians. So that's one of the things that actually um, turned me away. But you know, when you are planted on the rock, on the firm rock, which is Jesus Christ, uh, nothing, nothing will shake you. Nothing will shake you. The parable of the the um, the seed. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, 
and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some a hundredfold some sixtyfold some thirtyfold who had who have ears to hear let them hear and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even what he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, is that Isaiah, 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 which said, By hearing ye shall hear and, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. So, ladies and gentlemen, I went on too long, but um, I just wanted to tell you that he who forgives their brother, those will be exalted, because the Lord sees the humble heart, but he resisted the proud. Remember that. He resisted the proud. And I, I struggled with that. And I still struggle with it today, ladies and gentlemen. And I am just here to tell you as a humble human being, as a humble person of God, woman of God, that I struggle with this every day. And just the other day, I, ha I had to ask for forgiveness because my flesh spoke. It spoke. And every day it speaks. It does not want to shut up. And I'm just telling you that it's just something that we need to test our spirit. We need to test ourselves every day test our spirit and pray without ceasing and know that the Lord will provide. And um, recently, just last night, I felt in my heart to help my cousin who's been struggling. Um, her daughter is nine years old and she's been going from house to house. She has no stable house to lay her head in, no stable home. And my heart is to help foster children one day. I mean, my, the Lord placed it in my heart to help children. I used to protest in front of parent, Planned Parenthood. That's what I started doing. And then I, I um, volunteered at a local pre Christian pregnancy center and um, I taught there. I'm actually a teacher. So I taught there and that came natural for me. And I helped a lot of women through that. But through me, the Lord is working. So it's not me that is doing this, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Because like I said, he resisted the proud. And I just wanted to tell you that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I love you all very much. Lee, I love you so much, sister, and thank you so much for helping me. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your ministry. And I am humbled and blessed to say that the Lord is working through me and that he is allowing me to work in your ministry and, and that I hope that this has encouraged some of you and that this has helped others. Um, and the Lord bless you and keep you. May he light his shine upon you. Bye. God bless you.